everyone, my name is June. Today my story is about how I got into the rich man's club. I grew up poor myself, but I have a rich family history that I'm proud of. And now I'm going to tell you about the club and why I wanted to go there. Almost every provincial town has its classes made up of people, whole companies of interest. There are religious, clubs for chess lovers, board games. In our town, a club called Lowe's was very popular. Its name originated a long time ago. But since then, too much time has passed and no one has gone into the details of its foundation. Nobody, except me. I came to this town not long ago, just a year ago. I knew about this club from my grandmother. She died a couple of years ago. After she passed away, I decided to move here. The last time I was here was when I was two years old. We lived here with my grandparents and my parents. None of my family is alive anymore. I lost them all. Grandma was the last one to die. I had nothing else to do in the place where we lived, so I decided to come closer to my roots. Although we didn't live very rich, yet my folks had saved up a little money for college, and I decided to live on that money after I moved, saving my college education for later. The day after I moved in, I went straight to the notorious Lowe's Club. It was closed to outsiders, with guards at the entrance. They stopped me right away, saying they wouldn't let me in. Then I showed my bag of money and asked the manager. The guards looked at each other and let me in. I was met by Mr. Howard. He had been working here for about a hundred years. Hello, can I help you? I'd like to make an introductory payment. Ah, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be rude, but our admission fee is $25,000. On top of that, there's an additional cost per member one time every six months. That's another $2,000. The total is $27,000. But looking at you, or rather your age, it's hard to imagine that you have such funds. As far as I know, there's no age limit. If it's only a question of money, I'll pay $30,000. I'll pay the entrance fee for six months in advance, and you can keep the extra $1,000 for your tip. What a generous young man. Come in. What'll you have to drink? I'll bring the contract. I was accepted by the clothes. People aren't interested in your real truth. Just tell them what they want to hear. It wasn't hard. I just made up my story, said I came here for fun, that my father was a big businessman in South Korea, and he wanted to open a business here, and I was his eyes and came here to explore the area. The members of the club are important uncles of this town. There was both the mayor and the usual wealthy entrepreneurs here. They were drinking whiskey in the middle of the day, and I made do with a cup of coffee we got into a conversation about me. One of the businessmen was particularly curious about me. He worked in the census department, so the interest was purely professional. His name is Mr. Robert, and he asked me what I was planning to do here besides exploring the area. For now, I'm planning on hanging out at your club. I hear you have a lot of fun here. That's not the word. Sometimes the fun goes overboard, but that's okay because whatever happens in the club stays in Lowe's Club. By the way, what's the mission of the club? Is it just entertainment? Well, basically, yes. There used to be other things done here. The club was sort of a town hall, solved the problems of the residents and things like that. And then the character changed when its director passed away. What kind of director? His name was Mr. Bennett, and he was the most powerful man in the country and the richest. He had big plans for the club, but he died suddenly, and then everything changed somehow. Suddenly? What happened? They say he had an accident. I heard he didn't have a car. That's right, he was driving someone else's car. You got a lot of information, I see. No, just a little. I'd better go, I've got a lot to do. I'll come to see you next Tuesday. I said goodbye and went home. I was angry to the bone. I knew where I was going, so it took more patience. I got into the club and that was just the beginning. I spent the whole week observing the members and the club itself, watching every move, taking photos and videos, filling out the observation log, calling acquaintances from out of town, engaging journalists, newspaper and magazine workers for a decent fee. I needed a fuss to make a fuss about it. I was planning a coup and I didn't have much time for it because I was running out of resources. So I came up with something, came to the club with a proposal to re-elect a new director. 
What? You're too quick, don't you think? Why stall for time? By statute, I'm entitled to it. I have no debts, and I'm a member of the club, aren't I? But why would you want to do that? Of course, everyone was shocked. Too much initiative from the new guy. But I reassured them that times are changing, and if we do not act sooner or later, people will be outraged. Am I correct in assuming that in addition to the member's investment, the building itself, the land taxes and maintenance are done at the expense of the local residents? Right, but we don't talk about it out loud. That's a clever idea. Yeah, and that's how we save money. And what do you spend it on? On booze, what else? I'd like to propose myself as a director. Everyone looked at me in surprise, and I smiled and said I have more knowledge and experience than meets the eye. I offered each of them stability. Free parties here, drinking at the expense of the membership fee, but let me run the place. The members deliberated for a long time, and then said they couldn't trust me like that. I nodded my head and said it was okay. Mr. Robert was voted in as director. That was to be expected, and that's where it gets interesting. He threw another party with alcohol and girls and acted like a real pig. Then I purposely did not come to the party, pretending to be sick. It was enough for me to set up cameras in the hall and the toilets twice. The very next day, a video of them talking about how people were idiots spread around town. Feeding the members at their own expense and not even knowing it. 30 minutes later, the protests began. Everyone was demanding the resignation of the mayor and the closure of the club. Robert came running to my house and pounced, asking if it was my doing. I just smiled and said they did it themselves. And I just showed him. He punched me in the face and promised to destroy me, giving me 24 hours to collect my stuff. They dropped information about me and found out that I wasn't the son of a businessman at all, that I was poor and had come here for some unknown purpose. I took advantage of the protest and demanded an election for mayor and then proposed my candidacy. The residents laughed in my face. They said that I was an unfamiliar kid and that there was no reason to trust me. I stood on the podium, filled my lungs with air and said, My name is June Lowe. I'm the great-grandson of the founder Lowe, who founded this club decades ago. The former director is my uncle, and here are our family photos. One of them, when I'm a little kid, hangs on the wall of City Hall. And my uncle didn't die in a car accident like you were told. He was poisoned. Your mayor did it. You let a murderer run the city and feed off you. You can't let a stranger with pure intentions help you for real? People began to whisper. The principal, Mr. Robert and Mr. Howard, ran out into the crowd. They tried to calm the crowd down, and then they ordered the police to arrest me. Then I pulled another video out of my pocket, of the same bunch picking pockets of contributions to the city's piggy bank from people. It took me one week to find that out, and you've been living here for years blindly trusting these crooks. The mayor came up to me and grabbed my arm. I tried to get away, but they handcuffed me and took me away. They kept me in a cell all night, and then Robert told me I had 12 more hours, and that the indulgence was only for my good name, Lowe's. I was deprived of my money and forcibly sent off on the first train. I returned to my house without money or strength. Almost past midnight, I went to my grandfather's grave, and my great-grandfather's asking forgiveness for my failure. I was too hasty. I'm sorry, grandfathers. I was very ashamed. But then a man I didn't know approached me. I was frightened. I asked what he was doing here with me in the cemetery. He called himself a reporter, said he had been investigating the club for years, and that the information that had gone viral on the net was his trump card. He took me under his arm and we went back to my ancestor's town. Only now I was surrounded by the press. The excited crowd was perplexed. The journalist broke into the club with cameras, along with the police, and searched the place. They found money, allegedly destroyed or lost documents, and found what belonged to me, the title deed of the club. So I managed to get back what rightfully belonged to me. What will I do with the club? What my ancestors started. Taking care of the town and putting idiot members like Robert in jail. I intend to revive my legacy. Wish me luck. Hello everyone, my name is Archie. Do you believe that miracles can happen in life? Yes, not really me either. I've always felt like I had to pay for everything. That's why I grew up terribly distrustful of people. Hmm. Maybe that's why I pushed many people away from me. I think now I will tell you my story and you will draw conclusions and share them with me. So it'll be easier and easier for me to understand myself. I've been in this house for so many years, since I was born. 
The thing is, my mum worked here, and so did my dad. They were servants to Mr. Lowe's parents. Actually, that's where they met. Then they fell in love, and my mother got pregnant. Honey, is something wrong? Do you have a stomachache? You look very sad today. Darling, what will happen to our children? I don't want him to work here next to us. I want him to grow up free and educated. This job is our choice. He can have his own. But we will make sure that he has as many options as possible. And then they died, and I became an orphan. I don't know exactly why they were gone, but the local staff working at the time said they were sick. I was raised by another servant. Because my parents had worked well and won over their hostess, Mrs. Lau allowed me to stay with her. I've been living and working here ever since. Archie! 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 Where are you? I'm here, Mr. Jonathan. Where are you? Quickly mow the lawn, it's time. Okay, I'll do it. Mrs. Lowe, I'll do it. It's just that the car broke down. I fixed it, it's already fixed. I'll start now. There are guests coming in ten minutes. I don't want the lawn mowed in front of them. Hurry up. Yes, ma'am. <coughs> William, what are you doing? Go home. Quickly. Her son just <coughs> laughed and went into the house. Why is he so angry, her son? He's always been like that. That's how he grew up. He's not only mocking you, he's mocking me too, and more than once. But why? It's so humiliating to put up with all of his antics. What can you do? He's our host. He's the owner's son. He didn't hire us, and he doesn't pay the salary, so I'm not responsible for myself. Sit tight if you don't want to fly out of here. Mr. Jonathan and I sat late in the evening, eating dinner, sitting on the grass, and at the back of the house chatting. I then promised him that sooner or later, that I'll pay that kid back. He always bullied everyone, and it couldn't go on like this. At that moment, he, William, came out into the street. Oh, and I wanted to get some air, and there are two piles of garbage sitting, still eating. Take it back. Oh, don't open your mouth, it stinks worse than... But no, I'm just kidding. It doesn't get any worse. You forget yourself, boy. I can fire you, or I can put you away. I don't care, I won't let you talk to us like that, just because you have money. Yes, someone in this life was lucky, and someone's parents died a long time ago. You know, if I was your father, I would be ashamed to have a son like you. Tell me, how many times has your mother turned over in her coffin for being ashamed of herself? At that moment, anger boiled up in me. I couldn't stand it anymore, and attacked him. William and I had a big fight. The gardener tried to separate us, but he also accidentally got hurt. One of the guests came out at that moment, and everyone gathered around us. Mrs. Lowe came up to us, separated us with her voice, and then looked at me and at her son and said, Boys, this is not the way to behave. We have guests. Someone in the crowd shouted that the servants were not allowed to behave like this and demand that I be arrested and quickly. But somehow Mrs. Lowe overplayed the situation. This is not a servant, but my second son. I adopted him recently, so he's not used to manners yet, but he's learning. He has a good mind. He can analyse and he has a good heart. So guests, let's continue our conversation. Why did you pick a fight? It's all him. He started it first. What's the difference? What did I tell you? It doesn't matter who started the fight, but it matters who can avoid it or not start it at all. Archie, why don't you say something? Nothing, ma'am. I just, I started it. I'm ashamed. Forgive me. <sighs> do you take me for a fool? William, do you think that we do not have cameras in the backyard? Besides, Jonathan reported everything. And you, Archie, are you trying to be a hero? I have news for you. William, you need to learn to behave yourself. Be less selfish. I'm adopting Archie. Besides, I've already told the guests. What? No, mother, you can't adopt a servant. No way. I won't call him brother. What, ma'am? But how? And why? Quiet. I'm talking now. I've decided. From tomorrow, I will prepare the documents, and you, William, and I will have a separate conversation with you. Lo and her son left the room, and I sat there, still not understanding what it was. I didn't know what to expect, but I knew she must have decided long ago. It was not for nothing that she asked me what I would have done if I'd lived with William. I knew she couldn't handle it, and I guess she thought I could. In general, I will not tell you what William was hysterical about at first. He rebelled, he wouldn't eat, wouldn't leave the room. He was mean to me, he shouted, even cried. But Mrs. Lowe held her ground and didn't change her mind, stuck to the same behaviour. Life on the other side was quite interesting. Now the servants with whom I ate at the same table called me Sir or Mister and addressed me as You. I ate what I wanted, started studying, dressed beautifully and went out. William had been burning with misery all this time. Once he even tried to hurt me by pushing me down the stairs, but it didn't work. I'm a tough nut to crack. 
So, four months of enmity and battle passed, and gradually, William began to behave quieter and quieter, probably getting used to it. I will never call your brother. You're my servant, okay? I didn't want to be your brother, but it was your mother who adopted me, without my knowledge. I hate you, servant. I don't care, William. Boys, fighting again. You better help me with my luggage. Mum, mum, how are you? It's all right, boys. The doctor said that one of you saved my life. It's... it's him. Is that true? Me? I was trained to give first aid, that's all. Thank you, son. Can I get you anything? Maybe some water? She's all I have, thank you. And at that moment, for some reason, I felt so good at heart. That was the beginning of my relationship with William, Mrs Lowe. From that moment, I lived very differently and much happier. Tell me, did you guys like my story? Write your opinion about it in the comments below. Do not forget to put some likes on the video, share the video with your friends and subscribe to the channel.